A buck converter is a type of DC-DC converter that steps down a higher voltage to a lower voltage. This video is going to be a follow-up to my buck converter basics video, so if you have not seen that one, it's going to be linked in the description. Uh, before we go any further, please remember to like and subscribe. That helps my channel out a ton, so I'd really, really appreciate that. And also, um, please remember it's it's important that you watch this entire video from start to finish because some of the concepts i'm going to be introducing here will take me the full length of the video to completely explain so with that out of the way um, what i kind of want to do is i want to look at some examples of a buck converter kind of working with uh, a little bit of circuit analysis so that way we can one i want to kind of try to look at things from a little bit different of an angle than maybe I presented them in the original video. And also I think when we actually start putting some numbers on this thing, then it'll really show, you know, really help you understand how it, how it actually works, right? So what I have here is, is an example. Um, let's say we are trying to supply five volts to the load with a 24 volt voltage source. So we're trying to take a 24 volt voltage source and step it down to a five volt voltage source. So that means we want the voltage drop across the load to equal five volts, okay? So what I've done is I've labeled some, some parts of the circuit that we'll get to, um, but the first part I wanna draw your attention to is this little number right here. So this is just T equals zero microseconds. So this is just how long the switch has been closed. So this is zero seconds after it's been closed. And we're gonna assume that we are starting from uh, this is like on startup. There's no, it had not previously been running or anything like that. So this is from complete standstill. So at T equals zero seconds, we are going to, the, the current through the inductor is zero milliamps, okay? And we know that the current through the inductor is gonna be equal to the current through the load because they are in series. So I have uh, noted here, I sub RL, is equal to zero milliamps as well. So now this is like a, a key part to my explanation is what I want us to do is um, look at voltage not as a given value like it is over here where we are given 24 volts, rather look at it as the resultant value, the, the value that results from the current through our load times our the resistance of our load because we know V equals IR and so if we're trying to calculate what's the voltage drop across the load, then we could easily calculate that by looking at what's the current through the load times the resistance of the load, okay? And remember, we're trying to achieve a five volt voltage drop across our load. So I have quickly here, I plugged our numbers into this equation right here. So we know that the current through the inductor is going to be equal to the current through our load which is zero milliamps or zero amps right now. And then we know the resistance of our load is 10 ohms. So at time equals zero microseconds, we know that the voltage drop across our load is zero volts. This makes perfect sense, right? Lines up with our, our equations. Okay, so scrolling down, I have a snapshot. So this is just the same circuit with uh, like taking, I've taken snapshots of the same circuit at different moments in time, okay? So now the next little snapshot we're looking at is T equals one microseconds. So one microsecond after the switch is closed, let's just assume, don't get too hung up on after one microsecond, oh, is the current through the inductor really 100 milliamps? Just assume this is the case. The inductor is, a, is such that this is the case, okay? So at T equals one microseconds, we know that the I sub L1 is equal to 100 milliamps and we know that the current through the load is also going to be 100 milliamps because these two values are the same because they are in series, okay? So again, we're gonna to try to calculate the voltage drop across our load. We already have the current through the load and we already know the resistance of the load. And so given those values, you just plug it in, 0 0.1 amps times 10 ohms equals one volt, right? So we know at time equals one microsecond, the voltage drop across our load is one volt. Okay. 
So continuing on, what I've done is now we skipped all the way ahead to t equals five microseconds after the switch is closed. And so let's just assume that after five microseconds, the current through the inductor has ramped all the way up to 500 milliamps. And we know that the current through the inductor is going to be equivalent to the current through our load, which is going to be equal to 500 milliamps. And again, we know the resistance of our load so we can calculate the voltage drop across our load. 0.5 amps times 10 ohms equals five volts. So look at that. We have achieved the five volt voltage drop across our load. So what do we do after that point? Well, hopefully you, this kind of makes sense is we have already studied, we know the two conditions of the buck converter and we've seen this, this graph, this current graph up here. So we know that at some point we're gonna pull the plug on this inductor, right? Now in, in the real world, it's probably not going to be five volts is where we're gonna pull the plug. We might pull it at 5.05 uh, volts or something like that, right? And there's gonna be some type of ripple and that's, the, that's what the capacitors are for and that's why we have a iMin and an iMax is because we can't really achieve a perfect steady state uh, value here. Like it's going to have a little bit of ripple, but that's okay. Our, our electronics can function with a little bit of ripple. But I think the key concept I try to hit home and, and kind of illustrate with these set of examples here is that we're not really taking a 24 volt voltage source and stepping it down and bucking it down to five volts. What we're really doing is starting with the zero volt voltage source and letting it ramp up and then we're we are tactically we are strategically pulling the plug on this this voltage source that is ramping up until we're killing it at around 5.05 .05 volts right every time we're saying okay you, you have to turn off at 5.05 .05 volts and then you can turn back on at 4.95 volts okay something like that and also it should be noted that let's say this somehow this this switch were closed forever then eventually yeah the load the, the voltage drop across the load would achieve would, would reach 24 volts eventually right that's just kind of how the circuit works it should be pretty obvious from there um but hopefully that this explanation kind of makes sense to you guys because it's not so intuitive when you think about it you're thinking like how do we get 24 volts to step it down to five and that's not really what's happening what's really happening is we're starting at zero volts and we're we are ramping all the way up we're ramping up to five volts okay so hopefully that um that part made sense here and then finally there's actually even a third angle i kind of want to look at this through which is more voltage centric right so i kind of would consider that explanation i just gave more of a current centric because we're focusing on the current through the inductor well now what i want to do is kind of look at the voltage drop across the inductor and the way i kind of want to look at this is so if we know the voltage drop across the inductor and we know the current through the inductor then we can calculate what would be quote unquote the impedance of this inductor right so we know the inductor is in series with our load resistance so that means that the resistance of the inductor is going to be the total current through our circuit um, times the or should be i guess you could say it's the total voltage drop across our circuit divided by the total current through our circuit right so given at t equals zero knowing that there are zero amps flowing through our inductor and we know that there has to be a 24 voltage drop across our inductor because that's i mean that's kirchhoff's voltage law hopefully that makes sense to you knowing that 24 volts is going to be dropping across this then we know that 24 divided by zero equals infinite infinity right so that means this inductor is providing infinite uh, ohms of impedance at t equals zero because it's not allowing any current to pass and this makes perfect sense this lines up perfectly with what our explanation just was right if if, if the if the impedance is 100 ohms then we should expect zero amps of current to be flowing through the inductor now going down here um looking at it again we're trying to calculate what would be the ohms and also what i want to note is is look at this like now look at it like a voltage divider where you have a variable resistor right here and you have a a just a regular old resistance right here right so this is r1 and this is r2 and i'll even pull up a little calculator here in a second so we can kind of look at this more closely but now let's just say at time equals one we know 100 milliamps is passing through this circuit um so that means 
if you do the calculation, you, it comes out to be, okay, we have 230 ohms is what the quote unquote impedance of our inductor is at one microsecond. And then if you just do the voltage divider calculation, you'll see that if you have a 230 ohm resistor and a 10 ohm resistor right here, then it equals, you get one volt across right here. You get one volt um, uh, sitting right here and that'll be dropping across your, your bottom resistor, right? And it even works out the same if you do it this way, right? So if you imagine this to be, instead of an inductor, imagine it to be a 38 ohm resistor, then you would end up getting five volts across, drop five volt, a five volt voltage drop across our load resistor, right? Let's even look at this. So I even have it plugged in right here. So voltage source is 24 volts. So right here, and imagine this is where our inductor would be, right? This is the value that's changing. And so we have the resistance is 38 ohms. And then we have R2 is 10 ohms, which is this is our load resistor in this case. And look at that, the output voltage, which is right here, the voltage drop across our load, five volts, right? So that's kind of another way you can kind of look at it is that we have a resistor that starts out at infinite ohms and then slowly decreases its resistance until it allows us to get a five volt voltage drop across our load, right? So that's like another way you can look at it too. So hopefully these kind of explanations kind of further uh, developed your understanding of how a buck converter works. And I hope if these two videos uh, themselves will give you more than enough working knowledge of how to design your own buck converter and uh, explain them to other people. If you have any questions about buck converters or anything like that, feel free to drop a comment below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And I, like I said, I'll even make entire uh, videos to explain something if the question is big enough. So don't don't be worried about that. I'm, I'm extremely responsive in the comments. I'm extremely appreciative of anyone who comments down there. So definitely feel free to do that. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say in this video. And another thing I'll say in the comments is if you have any you know, project ideas you want me to work on, any questions about anything related to PCB design or electrical engineering, any circuits you want me to design, then I will be happy to explain. Any other things like buck converters that you want me to explain, I will be happy to explain all that stuff. So just drop a comment down below and uh yeah and I'll, I'll add it to my list so uh thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video and hopefully i will see you in the next one